Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. We are in lab number seven, Tiles and Notifications. In my uh, personal opinion, the tile features of Windows 8 are its most distinctive and probably its coolest feature, uh, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so the introductory text here, if you take a look at the overview for this, uh, for this lab, does a really nice job of talking about the different kinds of tiles and features that you can implement. And so here's just a really brief rundown. Some of these we've already seen, like the primary tile. It's 150 pixels by 150 pixels. Uh, then there's an alternate primary tile, which is double wide, 310 wide by 150 pixels tall. So if the user wants to, uh, to make a particular tile stand out, you may choose a double wide tile so you can find it more easily in the list of tiles. Then there's a secondary tile with deep links into, a, into the app to a specific feature or data set, and that's what we're gonna demonstrate in this lesson. Uh, then there are also these things called live tiles, which can display five updates uh, to the application, uh, little messages via queuing, and then also live tiles that can display push updates from the Windows notification service, and we'll talk about that and how to wire all that up. Um, and we're gonna work with each of these throughout the next three lessons or so, but in exercise number one, we're gonna start by incorporating secondary tiles and it's gonna allow the, uh, the user to bring up the app bar on a given recipe and then say, pin this recipe to our start page. And then from that point on, they can get back to that specific recipe directly from the start page and we'll navigate them into the correct recipe, all right? So um, it's actually extremely easy as we'll see. Uh, most of the complexity here is in this, uh, where you actually click on the app bar button that we'll implement in a moment. And so it implements uh, this, uh, we're gonna be working with this uh, namespace called windows.ui.startscreen, and it has this request create async that will create the tile that we construct on the start page. All right, so let's start way back up here. And the first thing that it asks us to do is to, um, uh, to open up the item detail page and add the following uh, button to our app bar in the left commands. So let me scroll over here and copy that out. And so let's go to our item detail page and we're gonna find our uh, left commands stack panel and we're gonna put it next to our brag button. When we do that, notice that it's missing the style pin app bar button style and that's really the next thing we're asked to do here. Those uh, styles are already defined. They've just been commented out inside of the standard styles.xaml. So let's open up standard styles.xaml, or actually I have a better idea. Here's another way to find a given uh, static resource. Just hit control C on our keyboard and then control find. And then what I wanna do is put a uh, double quote in front of it and then search the entire solution. And that should help us find its definition. And so the instructions tell us to merely move this beginning comment below that pin app bar button style. Now, the, we'll also un, uncomment out the style above it. I'm not sure that we're gonna use that here, but it won't harm anything to have that uncommented out. Okay, next up, it says that we should go to the item detail.xaml.cs page and add the windows.ui.startscreen uh, namespace that I talked about a little bit ago. Start there. All right, and you can see I've already been through this one time, so I'll go ahead and repaste it in, <laughs> okay? And then um, what we'll do next is to implement that on pin recipe button clicked event handler. So if we were to take a look at the click event for our new uh, app bar button, we would just be implementing this on pin recipe button clicked. So I'm gonna put that at the very bottom here below all of our on brag button clicked and the on capture photo and video that we worked through uh, several lessons ago. And so here, I've already kind of walked through what this does, but essentially whichever item we're currently in in the flip view, we want to grab that item and then cast it to a recipe data item. Then we want to retrieve the URI because we're gonna use that as the image for our new tile. And you can see where that's uh, passed in here, the tile logo URI is one of the last options in the constructor for a new secondary tile object. And then on our new secondary tile, we're merely calling request create async, which says, 
uh, go ahead and put it on the start page. So I think that's all we'll do for starters here. And now let's go ahead and run the app and watch this work. All right, so let's use a different um, different item this time. Let's choose uh, let's choose German meatballs. All right, so I'm going to right click to bring up the app bar, and then I'm going to click the pin uh, button. And when I do, notice that it displays this little uh, pin to start dialog and asks me if I want to rename this. Otherwise, this is what our new uh, tile will look like on our start page. I'm going to go ahead and click pin to start. And now if I were to go back to the start screen and scroll over, you can see that we have our German meatballs, um, uh, our tile displayed. And then also, I don't know if you can see this in the video, but there's also the text German meatballs. And we could have edited it, but we left it as is. So now what we want to do is allow the application, whether it's currently running or not, we'll take two different steps for those two scenarios. But either way, we're going to click on it and we want to come back to this page. You'll say, well, it already does that. No, that's only because it was in the suspended state. All right. Um, what if the app wasn't running or we were off on another page? Um, currently, let's just go over here to uh, uh, something that I can actually pronounce. Okay, carrot salad. And now we go and we click and you see it just comes back to the uh, the pear and carrot salad. So what we want to do now is implement the remainder of the instructions, which will allow us to both handle what if the app is, is currently running, then then all we need to do is just navigate to the correct recipe. But if it's not running, then we need to launch the app and then find the recipe. Okay, so there's a few additional steps there. But at any rate, what we want to do is follow the instructions here. So we're going to open up the app.xaml.cs on launch method. And basically at the very top, we're going to handle the case where the previous execution state was that it's running. So it might be in a suspended state, but it's, it's currently going right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and find our app.xaml the unlaunched event and uh, we're going to place this here near the top and so what we'll do is retrieve the args dot arguments and if they're not null or empty then we would expect them to contain the item that was clicked on by the user uh, in this case the German meatballs and so we'll send that in as a navigation parameter to a new instance of our item detail page uh, so that's the first scenario and then the second scenario is well what if uh, the app was was not running that it was terminated in that case then we'll need to take some different steps here and so we're going to paste this code right after the on suggestion requested and on commands requested where those are wired up. All right, and so here we go. Same basic idea, it's just a little bit different in its implementation. All right, so now we're gonna pin a recipe and then we'll stop debugging and then we'll return to it, verify that it's still there and then tap it to get into it. So let's go ahead and follow those basic steps. All right, so there we are in the Contoso cookbook. Let's immediately go to the star screen. Now we have our German meatballs icon. Let's just see if that works now, and it does. Awesome. Now let's, for example, go to a different cuisine here. Let's go to French quiche, and let's pin that one to the start menu. And uh, let's go ahead and then shut down, stop debugging, and Let's go back to the start menu. And this time, let's go ahead and click the quiche. And it opens it up. Awesome. All right, so it works. That was extremely easy, right? So we're off to a great start. I can see all sorts of ideas uh, or app, uh, you know, applications for this idea in my own apps. So next up, let's incorporate push notifications into our tiles. That'll be fun, too. See you there. Thank you.
Mm-hmm.